Okay, this is the main tools you're going to need. Um, good cross head screwdriver, good flat head screwdriver, 2.5mm Allen key, and a suitable tool for removing the valve. Uh, first things first, we get this uh, stock nut off. And this lifts straight up, pretty simple. And next you want to undo the barrel band and the, uh, the end cap. Just unscrew it a little bit, doesn't need to be completely undone. And we got retaining screw on the barrel so that's your uh, 2.5mm allen key for that one and then that's your barrel off you can see it's got three o-rings Trigger block. Set that aside. All right. Take your end caps off. Them to one side. Okay. Now inside here, got your screw which holds the uh, the bolt um, assembly in. So give that a and then. Be very careful when you take this off because the two pins which are set in the bolt will ping. Um, if they dry, which is common on a lot of guns these days, that they don't put enough lubrication on, um, they might ping off. So take it off carefully. There you go. And there's your two pins and your, your bolt. Um, with this. The square one sits at the back. This has been uh, already greased, so I found something to put. And uh, on this, I've got a brush transfer port. It's a 3.5 mil. Last transfer port. So make sure you don't lose that. I think these standard they come with like a plastic version which is a bit shite so get yourself one of them. Um, okay, that's your that's what holds your stock on which they seem to have made a bit too short because when you screw it all the way in and you put the stock on you haven't got enough thread there to get the, the retaining nut on so when you to put this back together you only want it just in so you get enough thread to get the stock and uh, that on a bit of a design flaw but there you go okay now it's your hammer spring it's your hammer and let's do that this is going to pick it up or not. You can see down there, that's your valve, um, and there's got a big slot in it, which is where you'll so where you 
use this tool. Slide it down very carefully. And give it a few good tips. Now on the other side here, that's the retaining screw for the valve. So when you find your screwdriver, you put the damn thing down. Oh, I can't find it. Oh, it's underneath the truck. Right. When you undo this. You have not to lose that. That's your screw which holds that in. If you've got a like I have on my on my port transfer, it's got a, a little O-ring which I've put in there, which is knackered, so that's gone. Um, careful not to damage this. I have a big piece of tube which slides over the. Uh, over the valve thing, so you can push it out this end which stops it damaging the, uh, the seal on all the metalwork as these seals don't, are not very resilient to the movement and stuff, but there you go so that's the, uh, the valve Okay. inside here we'll have these bits that's your piercer for the uh, CO2 caps um, obviously that hits that and uh, yeah, that pierces that lets the CO in Standard, they're the same thickness all the way down, but I've shaped mine, polished it to uh, allow better flow of the, of the seal. Uh, and this is the the valve. The air passes over that up through this into your into your barrel, and then uh, sends the part flying. Um, again, th this you can, it can be modified down to allow better flow. They are standard; they, they come and they, they're the same um, thickness here all the way along. What a lot of people do is turn them down uh, to make it more angled to allow the, the gas to come through more. But if you do that, do not get this thing hot, or you'll melt that seal. There's a little seal. A little seal there. You don't want to melt that. But uh, yeah, if you really want to go to town on this, you can. Um, where the port goes through, if you're handy with a very small Dremel bit, you can open it up a little bit, smooth the gas flow up. But I've not done that on this one for the simple reason is it's too easy to mess it up and then you have to buy a new valve which I uh, don't particularly want to do so yeah that's your the hammer hits this opens it up sends the, the gas through so you could turn it down a little more I suppose to get more flow I think probably take a couple of thou off that which will improve the flow more, but again, you've got to be careful not to go too wild with these. Um, so yeah, honestly, this side, this sits against there. And the reason for this is when the hammer comes down, it strikes that and pushes pushes the valve open. And what this does is obviously metal, metal, hitting on metal 
makes a big difference to the sound when you when you fire it. it takes a lot of the ting and the uh, metallic sound out of it. So just glue a small o-ring, make sure that it's not smaller than the strike face. Um, yeah, make sure it's quite thin so you because it still has to be able to hit the, uh, the hammer pin, obviously, to let the gas out. So, yeah. So, once you've tuned that or whatever you want to do with it, the way to put it back together is this piece first. Piece goes in first. Washer. And then the sleeve and the spring. I'll make sure it doesn't. Uh, make sure it goes into the, the hole properly. Can be a bit fiddly, but. Uh, And then check your seal, make sure it's alright. This one's got a few bits taken out of it, but it still holds gas, so I've got a new seal kit coming for this anyway. So these will get replaced. Um, but when you do this, do, before you put it back in the uh, in the, uh, the gas tube, do not tighten this up. As you can see, there's a gap there. Because obviously, you've got to slide this in, so I'm just get it so it's, there's no sideways movement. But if you start squishing it, um, tighten it up, sorry, it'll, it'll squish it, and then it'll be an absolute pain in the ass to try and get into the into the tube. But that's your uh, have a pin. Let's see if I can. Make sure it's not grinding, not catching on anything. There you go. So anyway, that's the valve system. Pretty uh, basic. There you go. Um, to uh, increase the power and efficiency on these, um, polish. Um, All of this, all of this, as many of these faces as you can. So what you're trying to do is reduce friction. Um, this has been polished as well. And obviously, don't go. You know, you can go absolutely stupid on it with uh, wet and dry and get a mirror finish. But I don't think the gains are any better if you get it mirrored or just take all the the rough uh, machine marks out of it. Um, um, also get the uh, inside of this done because the spring has got to slide in and out. You don't want uh, any, any catching on there. But, uh, on this I've put a extra bit of spring. So it gives it a bit more preload. Make sure you can still compress it down all the way. Otherwise you'll have problems trying to cock the damn thing. But that gives it a bit more preload so it hits the, um, the pin harder. Um, how much of a difference it makes I don't really know. I haven't chronographed this one yet. I didn't chronograph before and after but um, I, I use a plasticine test with some uh, hollow points um, to see what differences it makes. So it's a bit of a crude test, but um, just a big old lump of plasticine, which is pretty uh, pretty hard. A set of hollow points. Um, before I tuned it, this is the damage it was doing to the pallet. Um, yeah, not a great deal. 
Um, this is after. As you can see, it's a bit of a difference. But these underperform out, out of the uh, out of the box anyway. This this was quite low powered in my opinion anyway. But uh, yeah, after uh, after doing all these mods and the tuning I'm showing you, this is uh, the difference. Okay, so once you've polished this, you can shim this up here um, with some washers, uh, but I wouldn't suggest going much more than about 10 mil, 12 mil max. Otherwise, it uh, prevents this locking up. At least that's what I found with this one anyway. Same 2.5 mil. Don't need to undo it all the way, just enough to get this out. There you go. You remove your bolt. There you go. Okay, so with this, a good polish also helps. Um, Tolerances on these guns is not particularly correct as you can see. There's um, a lot of lines, which I'll show you now. Um, on the inside of the, the bolt thing, um, you can see it. I mean, I've polished this. this. This was almost mirror when I when I finished with it, but it's because of the the inside of this. And you can see, I mean, I've polished it, but I don't want to take too much out of it because, yeah, it wouldn't, uh, uh, they're already a, they're not a particularly uh, good, tight tolerance fit to begin with, and I don't want to take too much material out in case it just makes it too sloppy and it'll start, it'll stop twisting in the the cylinder part. I polished it down as best I could so the actual resistance now is a lot less than it was when I first started. I mean it, it was proper gritty and yeah, yeah not very nice at all. But uh, yeah, you just gotta polish it off a little bit. A bit of 500 wet and dry or a stick or something and just twist it through. But uh, be very careful how much you actually take off. You basically want to make it smooth. It doesn't have to be absolutely mirrored finished. You want smooth, no jagged edges, um, just so that the bolt passes through it nicely. And this one. So there's nearly five mil. The end. It's just over four mil. So yeah, it's just over four mil. Um, you can drill this out, but be very, very careful. You don't uh, go too wild with it because at the end of the day, this has got to push the pallet in as well, um, and it's too easy to mess it up, and you'll end up having to buy a new. Uh, a new bolt. Well, there is another mod that people do, and that's to cut them off there, um, drill a hole, and put a drill bit in it. But um, yeah, it's a bit extreme, and I fear it leads to some problems with loading pallets. So I didn't, uh, I didn't do that. I'm trying to make this a bit more powerful, but also reliable. Um, as reliable as you can get on one of these, I suppose. Again, this has been port matched the same as all the way up. So that's running. Yeah, you, you can um, ream a bit of that out if you wish. I didn't personally, I didn't see the point because people say, no, you can match this to the edges of the. Uh, where the o-rings are but 
that is your main restriction between the gas and the and the uh, uh, the barrel. So I mean, I mean, this doesn't fit in that. So yeah, you don't have to go stupid on there because you're still restricted with this port anyway. So yeah, just take this out to four mil at the max, I reckon, because it's pointless. I, you know, the gas isn't going to go any faster than what it goes through this port. So if this is three and a half mil, putting out a five mil is just a waste of time, in my opinion, anyway. Um, because you know, it's got to go through a four mil hole on there into a four mil hole there. And down a 4.5mm 4, 4 hole down the barrel so yeah I don't see uh, the point myself but yeah you know, if you want to ream it out to the one inch, inch of its life carry on but uh, I, I don't see the point I don't think there'll be any significant gains from it that's for sure and something else you can do with these and be very careful um, it's the insides of all of this can be very sharp when you go to put your uh, your valve back through it can start chunking off bits of the valve as you can see there it, um, it's got some quite sharp edges so it is I got some uh, 500 and some 1200 wet and dry um, I'm basically polished all the way in but only to there where your transfer port is you do not want to go past the transfer port because this part here where it holds the um, the gas if you mess up there uh, it won't hold gas and yeah good luck buying a new tube and everything else so basically this part here is not holding any gas so you can get away with um, wet and dry in it um, to just basically get rid of all the burrs inside just to make things a little, little nicer, um, yeah. Because the, the fit and finish is not perfect on these by any standard. Um, so yeah. Also, that's a degas port which I've added to this. Um, one of the problems with CO2s is they don't have a way of venting the gas. If you say you, when you start shooting them, you get, I mean, you get 20, 25 shots per um, per capsule but once you start getting to around 20 22 shots the the power drops really quickly but it can be like five or seven shots before it finally runs out of gas and you risk getting a pellet stuck down your barrel if it doesn't have enough gas to push it through obviously so I found that uh, you put a degas on it and once you start noticing the drop um, you can have a small so not this particular one, but you can have a small screwdriver. You put it in, you press the back of your you press the back of your hammer there. It pushes it against the um, the valve pin and lets all the gas out. So you don't uh, you know you don't risk getting a pellet stuck down the barrel. Um, yeah, but to put gas hole in. If you look, this is where you, it goes up through up to the bolt. And apparently it's 75 millimeters from the very end. I'll measure it now on my yeah, 75 millimeters. And then your best bet is to put this into the stock um, and measure the height above the stock because obviously it's going to sit. It's going to sit in the stock. You want to make sure it's not skewered by the stock. So 75 millimeters from that end. Make your mark up. And uh, yeah, make sure it's above the stock. Put 
another thing I found with the degas hole is when it comes to unscrewing the end, once you've degassed it, it comes off so much easier, which obviously doesn't stress the seals when you're trying to you know, force it out. It just makes it generally easier. So it's a very good um, mod to do, and it's free. Just a bit of a t bit of time and uh, a bit of carefully. Make sure you don't uh, stick it in the wrong place. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a little bit of 500 wet and dry up through there. Just get all this smooth, and then a quick one over with the uh, 1200, just to make sure. Obviously, make damn sure there's no bits of uh, grit and crap left in it after you've finished because you don't want that lot cycling in with your piston and spring and everything else that will not do it any good ah, trigger mechanism trigger on these out of the box is actually pretty good I was uh, quite impressed the safety I've taken off this one because uh, it's just pain in the ass. Um, safety has to be removed before you take the gun out of the stock as well. You've got to twist it the arm position and push it through, uh, tap it with a, you know, a if you've got a, a flathead or something, just tap it through anyway. So, so this is the uh, This is the trigger group. Pretty straightforward, simple affair. Um, the modifications done on this is, as you see here, I put a ball, a, a BB. Um, I f grinded one side of it flat, glued it to the back of the trigger, and I've replaced the original spring with a light spring out of a pen. Um, to reduce the trigger uh, weight on this. On the sides on the sides of this I have some washers, just small washers uh, greased up, uh, purely to, a, to not have any sideways wiggle. They do come with a bit of sideways wiggle and which when you pull the trigger it uh, grinds on the side of the, uh, the trigger block there. So a small um, small washer lubed up does the trick on that one. But uh, yeah, the, as you can see, the trigger ball is super light. It's nice. It's, it's light, but it's not too light that it'll go off if you drop the gun. And there's still a little bit of pressure on it. I haven't um, measured. Uh, the, how much pull there is on it. I don't have the necessary equipment to do that, but um, it's nice. It's a nice squeeze, nice and smooth. Jobs are good. But apart from that, you really don't have to do much to these triggers out of the box. They're, they're pretty, uh, pretty good triggers, to be fair. I mean, usual, just if you really want to go to town on it, is polish sears, faces there. Um, so that's obviously when you yeah. It's pretty. So yeah, you can polish those two faces if you really want to, but I don't think you. If you yeah, very little gains from polishing the fronts because you can see they they're quite uh, they're quite nicely done already. The adjustments on these. Oh, and I've adjusted mine. Just the right one. Yeah. This one is for your trigger travel. And the more you wind this in, it pushes the trigger this way, and you have less sear engaged. So be very careful um, with messing with that one. This one, it's just a stop over travel of the trigger. So once the once the sear it's broken past. This basically stops you pulling all the way back. So it's, uh, you keep the travel on the trigger to a minimum, keeps it nice, nice and smooth. Stops you jerking the gun too much when you when you fire. Very 
small gap. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's, you know, another mod you can do, which is next to nothing, a couple of pens for, for a couple of washers and a bit of um, uh, grease, just to keep it nice and smooth. So yeah, simple triggers, but very nice for what they are. For that. Garbage. Okay, so reassembly. Um, I use it's a, a dry molly paste by uh, some guy called uh, Lube Lord on eBay. I think it was a fiver, and this stuff goes forever. You really do not need a lot of this stuff um, to do the job. Um, you don't want to put a thick amount on it, you just need it literally tiny tiny bit will go a long way on these you know just burnish burnish it onto the metal like so yeah. and all, all the all the parts which are likely to be in contact with metal just give them a light burnish with this stuff that's all you need you don't need to put big globs of this stuff on otherwise you're just wasting your time efficiency on the rifle and that's that's it that's, you don't need a great deal of it so yeah but this for metal moving parts um, this stuff is is the bollocks for play uh, for your seals silicon grease again cheap yeah but it does the job keeps the seals Keeps the seals lubed, keeps everything nice, and uh, yeah. but only for the seals. So yeah. put it back together is basically reverse of this disassembly. Just put a small amount of this silicon around the seal. Again, you don't need to go mental with it, you're only just using it just to stop this from sticking as it passes through the uh, the, um, the, the cylinder. So. Okay, when it comes to putting this back in, go very, very carefully. Because these edges here, if there's a slight sharp bit, Will shave your seal in no time at all, and then you're going to replace your seals again. See, so always check when it goes back together, it's just a little bit catching on there. Okay, let's make sure. It should go in with very little effort. If you've smoothed the inside of this out nicely, this should go in. Not a problem at all. Obviously, line it up, and then you can fit your screw. The larger thread goes down the bottom. sits in. Again don't tighten it up fully, just using it there to hold it in place. Um, right now for the fun bit. Obviously this has got to go in. This port that's got to be going in facing up. I'm on the same on this, facing up. There you go. And you can see there where the, the degas hole is just behind the hammer edge, so you can push it. And then put these back in. Don't forget your square one goes at the back. 
you can polish them as well so that they're nice and smooth. Um, just helps with the, the caulking action. And obviously your, your circular one at the front. And uh, yep, you're ready to reassemble your uh, your caulking bolt, and uh, then becomes the fun bit of trying to get both of those into the groove. Because I've put the extra bit on the spring, it obviously sits a bit further apart, so you have to juggle it with. Pulling this way and pushing down without pulling our bloody port out, so that's always a fun job. Um, but it, it's not that bad. These need to go in. Make sure your thing there is in. Sure that's nice and tight because they do have a habit of undoing themselves sometimes. But as you can see, that's pretty smooth. The, uh, the inside of this is already burnished with the um, with, it, with the, the dry molly grease, so this is nice, nice and smooth. It's also worth putting a little bit of a polish. On those edges there, because when you're cycling it, it does rub against them. I still got to do with the finishing on this, but it does make it a bit smoother. But again, be careful not to pro reprofile it, otherwise, you can end up messing your talking action up. But, uh, so, yeah, it's definitely a lot smoother. Okay, uh, this bit normally you'd have a seal which goes in there and then your transfer port goes over the top but my seal is bugger so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it in for now because I've got new seals coming. But this is just for the just showing how to okay now for the fun bit probably going to swear a little bit because this never goes right for the first time. Use a little, little iron key. This is really fiddly. It's, if you don't have extra preload on the spring, it's not that bad. But when you do, it's it's quite fussy. So you got to push that forward. Oh, you bastard! And check. No, nope, didn't go. In the front one and the back one. Right. Can't really, I can't see. Nah, I can't see. But yeah, check that both those pins should move. That shows you got it in. Then Make sure your valve hasn't jumped your brass valve. If you've got a brass valve, obviously. Um, then you put your retain screw in. And uh, there you go. Right, 
And the next thing to attach now is your trigger. So I need them to do what you do. And this is pretty straightforward. The bigger goes in the back. There's a little cutout on this one which goes underneath there so it won't twist out. Okay, I'm going to give it a quick test to make sure. Job done. The next part, again, easy enough. Slide your barrel back in. Grip screw. See what I mean here. You don't get a lot of thread to get this on. That's why I leave it a little bit loose. Make sure to lube this the teeny bit of teeny bit of silicon. Good one. Also, to polish this part here helps with the cycling of the pellet. It, uh, it's quite rough. Again, be very careful, don't take too much out. Obviously, you don't want to um, risk taking too much out and the pellet twisting in it and all sorts. Well, that helps with the seating of the pellet. 